The concentration difference driving forces discussed in interface mass transfer are those existing at one position only in the equipment used to contact the miscible phases. In the case of steady state process, because of transfer of solute from one phase to the other, the concentration within each phase is changing as it moves through the equipment. Similarly, in the case of a batch process, the concentration in each phase changes with time. These changes produce the corresponding relationships in the driving forces and this can be followed with the help of material balances. In this section, we will consider overall material balance equations. Subsequent chapters, we will utilize overall material balance equation and local diffusional rate to design suitable mass transfer equipment. Consider any mass transfer operation whatsoever conducted in a steady state co-current manner. As explained earlier, steady state refers to condition of all properties that is the pressure, temperature, phases, flow rate, concentration, etc. remain the same at a given location and is independent of time that is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. It changes from location to location. Co-current refers to a situation wherein all streams enter at one location only and all streams exit from another location only. Let the two insoluble phases be identified as phase E and R and where a single substance A diffuses from phase R to phase E during their contact. The other constituent of the phases, namely solvents for the diffusing solute are then considered not to diffuse. At the entrance to the device in which the phases are contacted, the phase R contains R1 moles per unit time of total substances consisting of non-diffusing solvent Rs moles per unit time and the diffusing substance A whose mole fraction is x1. Now this is the schematic diagram of the co-current operations. Now you can see on the left hand side both the streams R and E are entering. R could be designated as R1 or Rs which remains constant. Small x1 that is the mole fraction of diffusing substance A and capital X1 is the moles of A divided by moles of non-diffusing solvent. Similarly, phase E is defined as by E1, ES, Y1 and capital Y1. E1 refers to the total moles of substance entering. ES is the total moles of non-diffusing solvent. Small Y1 is the mole fraction of the diffusing substance A and capital Y1 is the moles of diffusing substance A divided by non-diffusing solvent E that is ES. Same way you can describe the position at outlet also that is where they are defined as E2, ES, Y2 and capital Y2 and R1, R2, RS, X2 and capital X2. Now steady state counter current process. If the same process as previously considered is carried out in a counter current fashion where the subscript 1 indicate the end of the apparatus where R enter and the 2 that end where R leaves. So what is coming in is R1, Rs, small x1, capital X1 and what is going out at the same phase is E1, Es, Y1 and capital Y1. Similarly at the phase 2 what is leaving is R2, Rs, X2 and capital X2 and what is entering is E2, Es, Y2 and capital Y2. This diagram is a graphical representation of what is presented above. That is, we have got a plot of X versus Y. X refers to concentration in phase R, that is the moles of A divided by moles of non-A. Similarly, X is Y represents what? Concentration of A in the phase E, that is the moles of A divided by non-A moles. Now, 
when we draw an operating line passing through x1 y1 and x2 y2 we have got two operating line one below the equilibrium curve and one above the equilibrium curve the below the equilibrium curve is a line operating line with a slope equal to rs by es but what it says is the transfer of material from r to e takes place that's why you can see that x1 is decreasing to x2 and y2 is increasing to y1 when we look at the other operating line that is slope equal to r rs by es transfer from e to r what we find that y1 increases to y2 and x1 increases to x2 and in this case what happens is material getting transferred from e to r phase now we are looking at a few definitions what is first a stage a stage is defined as any device or combination of devices in which two insoluble phases are brought into intimate contact where mass transfer occurs between the phases tending to bring them to equilibrium and where the phases are mechanically separated a process carried out in this manner is a single stage process an equilibrium or ideal or theoretical stage is one where the time of contact between phases is sufficient for the effluent in need to be in equilibrium now we define a cascades a group of stages interconnected so that various streams flow from one stage to the other is called a cascade its purpose is to increase the extent of mass transfer over and above that which is possible with a single stage cascade could be co current counter current or cross flow type now first let us look at a cross flow type cascade each stage is represented by a circle and within each circle the flow is co current r phase flows from one stage to the next being contacted in each stage by a fresh e phase there may be different flow rates of e phase to each stage the material balances are obviously merely a repetition of that for a single stage and the construction of the distribution diagram is obvious cross flow is used sometimes in adsorption leaching drying an extraction operation but rarely in any other operations now this is the schematic diagram of what is happening you can see that okay, we have drawn three stages here first is stage 1 second is stage 2 third is stage 3 each is having a slope equal to minus rs over es 1 uh, minus rs over es 2 and minus rs over es 3 so es quantity could be the variable one we can change it similarly what we can do see here the outlet concentration of stage 1 that is x1 becomes a fit to the stage 2 and outlet concentration of stage 2 that is x2 becomes a fit to the stage 3 and finally it comes out as x3 main advantage of this system that is the cross flow cascade is that one can reduce concentration of solute in r phase to desired low level however each successive stage will give weaker solutions of solute in e phase counter current flow cascade these are the most efficient arrangements requiring the fewest stages for a given change of composition and ratio of flow rate and they are therefore most frequently used the flow rates and the compositions are numbered corresponding to the affluent from that stage so that y2 is the concentration in the e phase leaving the stage 2 and so on since the stages are ideal the affluents are in equilibrium that is y2 is in equilibrium with x2 and so on this is the graphical representation of what happens in counter current flow cascade you can see that we can draw number of stages graphically first we have drawn equilibrium curve uh, y versus x then we we have drawn the line ps with the slope of the operating line as rs 
by A S. It is passing through the various point x zero y one, and we can say x n p and y n p plus one, and we can write various stages which is required. For most cases, because of a curved equilibrium curve, the relationship between number of stages, composition, and flow ratio must be determined graphically. For the special case where both are straight line with the equilibrium curve continuing to be straight to the origin of the distribution graph, an analytical solution can be developed. Specific equations will be derived on case-to-case -case basis 